Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming this morning, and I'm surprised there aren't 30 people here with a day like today, yeah, but okay. yeah, they're losing out. They're missing out. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about and demonstrate, I'm going to demonstrate and talk about and teach you uh, the basics of chipping. And it actually is a two-part series I teach, but I'm going to try to cram it in in an hour. And one is learning the basic uh, stroke. Uh, and set up the stroke and the other is actually working on getting your distances based on that stroke Okay, I think some of you have taken my chipping class before so this is a lot of this is review But it, you might you know glean some other good stuff out of it today So I'm going to just warm up here a little bit Try and get my swinger going Let's go play golf Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so as you can see, my stroke is very small in chipping. Chipping is considered, in my opinion, as being about between, uh, well, five yards from the fringe of the green. That's why we want to keep a very small stroke. Uh, what our ideal is, is to get enough loft on the ball to have it loft over the fringe and messy stuff and, and land on a nice smooth green smooth uh, clean surface then roll up to the hole like a putt and in that process why we want to get as much roll as we can is because we can watch the ball roll and start reading the green even before we set up for our putt okay so that's the idea of keeping the ball low we want to see what that ball is going to do after it hits and starts rolling then we can figure out um, you know we're halfway there and reading the green we know what to do okay all right any questions about that all right well we'll start uh, by the setup and I'm using starting out with my lob wedges as you can see I have all my irons lined up here uh, from my lob wedge clear to my hybrid and in chipping this method of teaching uh, that I teach is we use them all the idea is to develop one solid stroke and I call that the eight o'clock to four o'clock swing. Eight to four, you use that no matter where you are within about five yards of the green. To get your distances, you select the correct loft of club is gonna give you your loft and roll. And I find out once people get this, in fact, I've had people tell me that they have dropped 10 strokes in one round by following this method because it made their putting better. If they were able to gauge their distance and get the stroke right, gauge their distance, and then, you know, you've got tap-ins or maybe even holding it out. Another reason you want to keep the ball low is your percentages are better of it hitting the pin and going in. If you try to loft one up, I'll, I'll hit a lofted one here to one of those flakes there. It can be a good shot, which that was a very good shot. I hit a little behind it. But your swing is big, and so therefore, it's hard to control or know where you are. So I'll try another one here. I mean, that could be a very good shot, but I really don't have an idea of the roll of the green by doing that. It could be a great shot. But what do I do next? I haven't watched the roll, so I don't know. Okay. All right, so let's start with that little eight to four swing. And our setup is you play the ball, off the instep of your back foot. And if you need a club to kind of go along with me, feel free to grab a club because a lot of people learn by, you know, mimicking. But you play the ball back on the instep of your, everybody's right-handed today, so this is your non-target or your right foot. Your stance is very narrow, so um, keep it within about a club head length between your feet. That helps you realize your balance more. Some people, they tend to get too wide and they start swaying off the ball and then hit behind, miss hitting, that type of thing. So a very narrow stance is really helpful to keep you balanced. All right, so we've got the ball off the instep of the right foot. Now, your weight distribution. 70 to 75% of your weight stays on that left side. Why do you think that? Why, why would that be so? Anybody have an idea? Well, yes and no. Don't really want to swing up on it. Actually, we, we swing down to have it go up. Forward, yeah. The most important reason for this, those are good, good 
answers is to swing like a pendulum. So we bottom out in the same spot every time. In tipping, if we have two balance points, what are we doing? If I'm, you know, going off to the right foot, on to the left foot, what happens up here? Swing. I'll do one of those. See that scooped behind it. So we keep our weight forward in chipping as well as pitching and putting to maintain our balance. So in an ideal world, if I had a lot of good balance, you know, I could probably chip like this and do quite well. So weight stays forward. So you can maintain balance and be consistent on every shot. To me, this staying on the left side is one of the most important things in short game to keep you balanced and swinging like a pendulum. So you bottom out at the same time, same spot every time. Any questions about that? Okay. All right. Uh, this is an option. You can choose to open up to the target a little bit. What this does is it puts you in a position almost like you're bowling so you can receive the target a little bit better. Uh, some people prefer to be square, just your, their orientation in their mind about things or their sight. That's fine too, but I find most people prefer to open up a little bit so that they can view the ball and see where the ball's going to their target. Okay. All right, uh, grip pressure, very light. If you start choking and squeezing the club, you're not going to be able to feel that club head bonnet and bottom out. So you're going to be, you know, arguing with it. Kind of one of those kind of shots. It's going to be, uh, the ball is just going to kind of squirt off the club face and you have no feel for your target. Chipping, like I say, is kind of a tossing motion with the right hand. That's all it is. So it, there's a lot of right hand in the chipping stroke. Here's a good way of learning the chipping stroke, of actually getting the left hand off and learning to stroke through the ball with just your right hand. Some of my students, they actually uh, play golf that way. It really, really helps them get a light touch. Oops, doesn't that work? So that they can feel the target better. All right, so there's a lot of right hand, but a light grip. Um, Left hand is on there just to, you know, get your direction. I call the left arm the direction finder. The right hand, right arm is your throwing arm. So you get those two working together, and you've got a pretty consistent swing, okay? Staying on the left side. All right, eye focus. I find it helpful for people who have a lot of sway and have trouble, the swing might look great, but they have trouble um, making contact with the ball to look just ahead of the ball. Just visualize a little piece of grass out front and your job is to sweep it away. That way we come down down on the ball so that the ball can travel up the grooves and get a little back spin on it. Okay? So if I look just ahead of the ball, it seems to help quite a bit in my consistency. Now this is important too. When you chip, it's like the right hand is tossing, but the back of the left hand needs to face the target. So we don't want to scoop and use wrist in the chipping stroke at all. Here's what happens if you use your wrist. You don't know where in the heck you're bottoming out. It could go anywhere, you know. So we want to take the stroke here into our thorax area and feel it here and have the hands just be an extension of this. Uh, I often say that you want to feel like your hands and arms are in a plaster cast. This is all in a cast, plastered together, and all you can do is make a little simple move like that. Of course, I can't talk and do it at the same time. <laughs> right? Swing length is from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, that being 6 o'clock. And if you learn to develop that little swing very consistency, consistent, you're going to be dynamite around the greens. So eight to four. And that gives me a pretty consistent shot. Any questions so far? At what point are you bending your right elbow? Always. Okay. It works like a fulcrum off of your right hip. So if the right hip moves, staying on your left side, 
But if you take your right hip back, elbow stays down, and you're actually hitting, making contact with the ball with your right hip and your elbow, which keeps you very square at contact. If this is working independently, you know, you could bottom out and the ball will squirt off over there, if you go over there, all kinds of things. So in chipping, we're working off that right hip area. Elbow in, I call that sticking to your ribs. Or actually both elbows in. Then that brings the swing in here. And we have an innate sense in us how far things are intuitively. So elbows in helps you um, feel that better. Did that answer your question? Right, but so you're not really trying to stiffen both arms. No, it's a relaxed firmness, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like locking it all in. You're in a plaster cast, you still have movement, movement within the cast. But it keeps you, yeah, yeah, keeps you, keeps you just perfect, perfect execution. Um, any more questions so far? Where I have a problem is if the ground is really hard, yeah, and it goes scolding off because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. That's really important when you have a surface like that. You can choose to putt it. If you have a smooth surface leading up to the green, if it's choppy and bumpy, eh. So if you're in that situation where you have a hard surface here, but you've got fluffy grass in between, you have really got to stay on that left side. You can't waver at all. And you can make a nice clean shot off there. If you're wristy, you're going to get off. So you really have to stick to your ribs and just stay right there over the ball and not waver back and forth. That's where people fail on um, a thin grass surface. Did that answer your question? Yes. yes. So the shaft is off your left hip? Yes. When I look down, I, I relate it to the instep of my right foot. It could be right hip as well. That'll keep you forward. But the, the shaft is flawed, the angle. Oh, yeah, the angle is actually, see how far my hands are ahead of the ball? Right. Because when you chip, you want to keep the ball low. If I choose to do this, then I'm going to give the ball more loft, just based on, you know, what uh, the club facing. Okay. So yes, hands. I, my hands are off of my uh, target side leg. Ball is back. That keeps the ball low, so you'll get a nice roll and run. As opposed to pitching, where we play it up front, hands are back. That gives you a lot of loft. Did that answer your yep. questions? Okay, yep. anything else? Before we move on, move on to how to get your distances. Okay, well that was my lob wedge, and my lob wedge kind of goes to the hole. A few went a couple feet past, but those are makeable putts, all of those. You know, that could one putt those well, on a good day. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> I on a good day where I don't have an equilibrium problem. <laughs> All right, so my lob wedge goes within that little circle of balls. Now I'm gonna aim a little bit to the right of the target because now I'm gonna pull out my sand wedge, do the same swing. And look how it rolls further, a little farther. I'll do one more, see if I can duplicate that. Hit that a little thin. So there's a couple of lob wedges that go in a foot or two of each other. Okay, sand wedge, I mean a pitching wedge, same stroke. I didn't bring my gap, but normally my gap wedge would be my next club I would use. So this is going to go a little further. Bonk. <laughs> Hit the other ball. Do one more. So the trouble I'm getting into here the ball is hitting an uneven surface before it approaches the green, so it's deflecting the roll and bounce. So I'm just going to play a little more forward to give it a little more lob, see what happens. There we go. Okay. So, so in higher, between, pardon I'm me. sorry. The higher the degree, the farther it goes. No. No, the less it goes. Yeah, the higher. Okay. All yeah, right. so a lob wedge goes really high, five iron goes really low. Okay. Okay. So that was my pitching wedge. I'll kind of skip a couple of clubs here and I'll go to my seven iron. Same stroke, nothing different. Okay. 
technically you want to basically land it at the same point of the green right. and so the I would not change the roll. Unless I have a really smooth surface here, I'm not going to pull out my seven iron for that back pin. If I'm up close, yes. You know, because I it only gives it a little roll, little little hop. It right. won't yeah. go high. All right. Now let's pull out the five iron. Farther, doesn't it? Oh, oh go in the floor. Floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you notice how I was able to watch the roll and see how it broke. And there's a lot of time there between between the time it lands and it gets to the pin to study the green and what it's doing. The grain, everything comes becomes involved in that those few seconds there. All right, and this is my hybrid. So if I was on a completely level surface and I was to hit five balls with each club through lob wedge through um, the hybrid, you would find a grid out there. All my lobs would land within the area of that first pin. My sand would go a little beyond. Gaff. Pitching is probably the right one to use that second pin here. Then nine, eight, seven, six, five, hybrid. So if, the, if this was a flat surface and there was a pin way in the back, I'd pull out my hybrid if I was a little closer in. Sometimes, though, if there's a smooth surface, I may use my hybrid if I know it's gonna uh, accept a bounce well, okay? So that's how you get your distances. So if you, first of all, just get consistent with a swing, it's almost like you're a stork. You know, uh, to learn this, sometimes putting the right foot behind helps. It helps you understand and strengthen that left side to stay on it. Um, then slowly ease it back. If you mess up uh, at, like normal, you know, punish yourself. <laughs> Go back to that for a while. Don't let your body learn to shift swaying because that's, that's the death move in this. In this. Even on the forward, you, you, you're not following Yeah, you do, you do go with it. You're still on the left side, but you're on the outside of your left foot when you go. Now let's talk a little bit about what the head does. And this may help all of you out on your full swings too. Yesterday, I struggled with equilibrium issues, especially during the um, poll uh, pollen season. Yesterday, I was having a heck of a time with it out there. I was playing and I was hitting the ball out of bounds. This is on my full swing. Then I remembered, keep the head behind the ball. See the club face meet the back of the ball. And I'll be darned if they start straightening everything out. And I played really well yesterday. Just that one little thought, because if the head's moving, I don't know where I'm going to bottom out, what I'm going to do. But if I remember seeing the club face meet the back of the ball, I can get a decent shot off. Now notice what my head does right after impact. It goes, and, and, and the right hip goes with it. Okay. So you, Sticking to your ribs, sticking to your core, if you do that, you're going to have a perfect follow through. But the minute you get out here and get the elbows out away from your body, you don't know where you are. Then you have to make a last, last ditch effort to try to make contact with the ball. Make sense? Okay, questions before we let you guys start hitting. It's not in the rut by the green. Should you not chip? No, that becomes That's a pitching, pitching shot. Pitching. Yeah, that becomes a pitching shot. And so what you're going to do is you're going to have a bigger swing and you're going to start using the balance of the club. I'd rather make contact in thick grass here than here. Okay, this is going to catch. You might leave a divot and stub it, but if you use the bounce, and usually it helps when you use the bounce to lay the hands back a little bit. That helps make that bounce come into play. A lot of people open up the club base. That will work too. But I think shank, yeah. <laughs> when I have a hard enough time with well, equilibrium, when I do that, you know, I can perform the shot on a good day and you have to swing outside in across your body. And that's a little more advanced method uh, for me to teach, you know, rather than just hands back. So I'm getting a little bit more height just moving the hands back. Ball position as well. You can play it back to take off loft, play it forward to give yourself more loft and then position your hands. 
Did that answer your question? Good. Anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll come around and help you each individually. <laughs>